This is Paramecium caudatum, a species in the genus Paramecium. Paramecium are easily identified by their characteristic footprint shape and hair-like structures around the cell called cilia. Paramecium can range from 50 to 330 micrometers long. Paramecium cell is surrounded by a pellicle, which helps the paramecium keep its shape and allows for some flexibility. This is a perfect shot of trichosis in action. Trichosis are used in the defense of the paramecium. The trichosis has a spindle-shaped body and at the wider end looks similar to a golf tee turned upside down. Trichosis are located at specialized cortical sites and there are typically about a thousand per cell. When the paramecium is attacked, these little filaments are fired at the, at the attacker um, to try to thwart the attack. Now what you're about to see is a paramecium pooping. Yep, after useful material has been digested by enzymes in the paramecium, the remaining waste is ejected through the cytoprot. Right here you can see the contractile vacuole. The vacuole is used to transport waste liquid out of the cell. The vacuoles work by collapsing in an alternating fashion, which empties the liquid out through the pores. If there is too much water in the cell, it'll rupture, so the contractile vacuole is crucial to the survival of the paramecium. It is constantly working to regulate this balance. Paramecium have two nuclei. The main purpose of the micronucleus is reproduction. The micronucleus is a regenerative, regenerative nucleus that contains the genetic information that is passed along to its offspring during reproduction. The macronucleus is ellipsoidal in shape and almost looks like a kidney. The function of the macronucleus controls the metabolism of the cell. The macronucleus lacks any nuclear membrane. All other cilia on the paramecium are thought to be used for movement except for the caudal cilia, which are the longer cilia. During the mating process, cilia are used to initiate the mating process, also known as conjugation. The pellicle is made up of three layers, the plasma membrane, the alveolar system, which is a section of flattened membrane-bound sacs, and the epiplasm, which is a layer that lines the inner alveolar membrane. Together, these three layers get molded into ridges, which actually form shapes like hexagons and parallelograms that appear all over the cell surface. To learn more about the cell membrane, search for microscope clarity cell membrane. Paramecium can be found in many different bodies of water. This sample was from a pond, but paramecium can be found in lakes, streams, and other freshwater sources. Paramecium have been known to eat bacteria, small eukaryotes, and algae. Paramecium are larger microorganisms, so their main predators are amoebas, dididiums, and water fleas, also known as dapnea. And for more on amoebas, water fleas, you can search for microscope clarity amoeba and microscope clarity dapnea. Paramecium can reproduce in two ways, conjugation and binary fission. Conjugation is a sexual reproduction, which requires another paramecium, and binary fission only requires one paramecium and results in the splitting of a paramecium into two daughter cells. As you can see, paramecium can glide back and forth and move in quick bursts. I really like observing paramecium because unlike other microorganisms, They'll stop and pause for an extended amount of time, which makes it easy to fully observe the details. Cilia, as you can see here, are little hair-like projections that are just a continuation of the cell surface membrane. The two main functions of the cilia are for movement and for ingesting food. The cilia that are responsible for ingesting food 
are located in a funnel-shaped depressed region of the cell called the gullet. For more resources on microscopy or microbiology, visit microscopeclarity.com.